Hello and happy Halloween. The day is finally here. It is time for candy and pumpkin carving, all of the Halloween traditions, and of course, the horror movie marathons. And no matter what your relationship is with horror movies, love them, hate them, love a certain kind, one thing that is uh, very polarizing are the jump scares. So some people love them, some people can't stand them. Um, I'm kind of in the middle where like, I could take it or leave it, but as long as like it serves the overall story of the movie, then you know, I understand it. It's when movies are like, hey, kind of a flimsy plot, don't have much to go on, let's just fill it with jump scares and call it a day. Like that's when it gets to be like, okay, this is a gimmick that is getting unbelievably overused. Um, it's clear that these people behind this movie were like, let's just throw a bunch of jump scares out there and let it rip and we'll call it a day. And I think that's where it gets such a such a bad rap and such a polarizing um such a polarizing reputation because, you know, when used right, a jump scare can be unbelievable. And that got me thinking all of the horror movies I've been watching all month have gotten gotten me thinking about it. And so to celebrate Halloween, I figured what better time than now to go through the five jump scares that absolutely terrified me, stuck with me, whatever you want to call it. The five biggest jump scares um, that I've ever had from watching movies. For me, when it comes to, to scary movies, jump scares, all of that, it starts pretty much with um, John Carpenter's version of The Thing that had Kurt Russell and Wilfred Brimley follows a research team up in the Antarctic who come across basically a um, an alien life form that has thawed out in the snow and can take the form of anything. I saw this movie when I was probably too young to see this movie. Um, it's one of my dad's favorite scary movies, so he was very eager to show me it. And there are not one, but two of the biggest jump scares of my life in this movie and the first one uh there is a point where one of the characters is um basically having a heart attack he's falls on the ground he's unconscious he he can't breathe and they decide they have to try to save him and so they're trying to do cpr and they get him up and they're like okay we need to um what's the word we need to hit him with the paddles we need to we need to jolt him here we need to give him we need to give him um a shock and so they go one and they clear and they do it and nothing two and they do it and nothing three and the the person's chest caves in into big jagged teeth and it bites the the doctor's arms off that's doing the the um oh, i wish i knew the name that's doing the the paddles and it just all hell breaks loose from there <laughs> And as a kid, I was like, what the hell is going on? Like, that shit was traumatizing as a kid. And, like, my dad did that dad thing where, like, it was on, like, two where nothing happens. And he goes, like, oh, and, like, gives me, like, scares me there like that. And I'm like, oh, my God. Man, can't get worse than this. And then as I'm thinking that, boom, and it's just, it's a perfectly done jump scare. And then the other jump scare in there um, is a little bit later. They devise a plan, Kurt Russell and a few devise a plan that is a blood test. They're saying, we're going to test the blood because this thing doesn't, you know, doesn't work together. Like it wants to just survive. So if we heat up a metal rod and stick it to blood, we're going to know because the blood's going to do nothing if it's normal. And if you're the thing, it's going to react. And <laughs> so they're going through these tests and they're like, oh, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. And they get to one person who they're about to do it. And someone else yells like, this is so stupid. This is bogus. I can't believe we're doing this. And Kurt Russell's like, I knew you would say that. So we're testing yours last. Like, I know you're the thing. Let's do it. And he tests the next one. And boom, blood shoots up everywhere. Uh, the person who whose blood it is starts like melting down in his chair. Basically, like it is so unexpected. We'll do you last. And I mean, 
maybe that's just because I was a kid and I didn't yet know that basically horror movies are going to assault you every second they can when it comes to just scaring you. But it just, it, you know, I don't know if it's like, yes, I think there's still truly effective scares. But I think part of it, too, is like I was just that's the earliest memory I have of a movie being like, hey, <laughs> you better stay ready because this is not going to stop. Uh, so if you've not seen the thing, I cannot recommend that enough. It is still holds up. It is still terrifying. Ah, uh, just John Carpenter is just a, a genius. Next up, a bit of a more recent movie, uh, The Conjuring, the first Conjuring from uh, James Wan about the Warrens investigating the farmhouse <laughs> that the residents uh, think is haunted, that is very clearly haunted because a ton of scary stuff happens while the movie goes on. And James Wan is really good at horror because he is genius at executing those jump scares. He very easily could devolve into jump scare, jump scare, jump scare, jump scare, you know, like nonstop. But what he does instead is he builds a lot of tension in those scenes first and then he hits you with like an unexpected payoff. And the jump scare in this movie that gets me every time is... Um, looking through the wardrobe and they close the wardrobe doors and look up and it's the, the it's just right there it's right in your face on the wardrobe I was in the theater and I think like out loud I was like oh shit like I was like and that was the only thing in that movie really that like truly like startled me like everything else was like this is really creepy this is really unsettling this is really but that <laughs> that wardrobe scene probably took years off of my life with like how unprepared I was for it like that was just like Oof, just like a slap with cold water first thing in the morning. Another, I guess I'll call it formative um, horror jump scare is that I wouldn't even really call it a horror movie, but I was, um, I believe I was 12 when I saw this movie in theaters and it's, uh, it's Signs, the M. Night Shyamalan movie with Mel Gibson and Joaquin Phoenix. It's all about crop circles and aliens. And there's a scene that comes to mind when you think of signs, like the famous like jump scare scene is the alien walking across the, on the on the videotape on the the birthday party videotape that gets submitted to the news that Joaquin Phoenix sees that finally like convinces him. And that's a really good scene and a really good scare because when you watch it back, you're like, oh, it's there the whole time. Like I just don't see it, and that's a really it's a really tough trick to pull off. And and the fact that you could notice it on repeat viewings and still be like, man, I, it's, I was not prepared for that. But instead, the jump scare with this movie that absolutely gets me and got me in the theater as a 12-year-old was, um, uh, so Graham goes to um, his neighbor's house. It's uh, Mel Gibson's character goes to his neighbor's house who is M. Night Shyamalan in a cameo performance who says, hey, I trapped one of the aliens in my pantry. Don't let it out, but it's in my pantry. And then he leaves. He's like, hey, do with that information what you will, but I am out of here. And uh, of course, he's like, oh, I got to go in. I got I to gotta see what's going on here. And he goes in and he's like investigating the pantry and he hears something. And he's like, oh man, I don't know. And he takes a knife and he like looks under the door with the knife. And a hand comes out and he freaks out and like cuts down, like cuts the fingers off of the alien. And you hear the alien scream and he's like, time to go. We let's get out of here. Again, it's another one where like he builds so much tension before hitting you with the scare that like you're like oh wow okay well maybe there is nothing there <sighs> but no you're wrong there's something there there's always something there like come on um 
And so you get like multiple, like three or four times he like goes under and looks and like moves it around and like is doing all sorts of knife stuff. And then finally at like the last possible second, you see the hand jut out and it makes it so much more effective that you're like in the middle of letting your guard down. Like, oh, okay, I guess this is, and like, I know a lot of movies try to capture that because it's so effective, but it's so hard to just pull it off right. And so when you see it done like that, it is just unforgettable. And the last one um, on my personal top five has to be the original Friday the 13th. I was a teenager when I saw this and um, really effective slasher movie that kind of just turned the volume up on Halloween where they were like, we're going to be bloodier, we're going to be sexier, we're going to be a lot more kills, a lot less uh, pacing and character. We're going to put out archetypes, and we're going to kill them all, and you are going to just eat it up. <laughs> and you get through the whole movie. It's a, it's a very um, influential and iconic slasher movie. You get to the end where our final girl, Alice, has uh, defeated the villain, Mrs. Voorhees, She's floating out in her canoe. She sees the police coming. They're arriving to camp. They're coming to save her. And as she's laying there, the music's all peaceful. It's like, movie's over, guys. We did it. We made it through. And as that music's going, the peaceful music even, um, Jason, Mrs. Voorhees' son, who she says has died at the camp because the counselors weren't paying attention, bursts out of the water and grabs her and pulls her out of the canoe. And not knowing that that was coming, that was like, I threw the bowl of popcorn across the road. Like, I just remember, like, being like feeling confronted by that jump scare like being like oh my god like it's so effective and i think it's the music because music is such a key thing to any horror movie but like a good music cue can just really change the game and you you know you hear that music you see the peaceful scene you see the police coming you like just fully let yourself get lulled to sleep and they absolutely used that to their advantage and it's unfortunate because that became like a a huge like we have to have that last second scare to send the audience out on so it kind of became like a bit of a of an expected trope but it man that that instance was unbelievable um the first time i ever saw it um and even now like rewatching it like it's hard to like remember the timing of it you're like i know it's coming i know it's coming ah, well, there it is okay and like it's just you know it's such a well crafted unexpected moment uh but those those are my five um let me know in the comments uh what you think the best jump scares are or which ones you remember the best or got you the best please let me know in the comments uh have a great and safe halloween today thank you for watching and i will be back soon